Moments after the release of his seventh solo album, Chromacopia, Tyler the Creator took the microphone and made it clear what the 17,000 fans inside the Inuit Dome in Inglewood, Los Angeles had just heard. Here's the rapper's quote, I'm not the same guy I was at 20. People grow up, some people have kids, families, and I have a new Ferrari, and it's a little weird. I'm gaining weight, and I already have gray hair on my chest. Life is moving on. I just wanted to write about what I think about when I'm alone. This moment perfectly reflects Tyler's new, more mature era, which began with Flower Boy, reached a commercial peak with Igor, and soared to new creative heights with Call Me If You Get Lost. Now we have Chromacopia, Tyler's most personal and at times touching album. Tyler reflects on what it means to have all the successes and accolades he's dreamed of. The inspiration for the album came from his mother, Bonita Smith, who serves as a spiritual guide and beacon for Tyler, trying to make sense of this stage in his life. As always, Tyler wrote and produced every song himself, taking the lead in the creative process. This also means that we can expect a treasure trove of easter eggs, including what chromacopia actually means. We'll get to that later. For now, here are the reasons why Tyler can be called a true genius of the hip-hop industry. Well, let's get started. Sometimes it's strange to remember that Tyler has been in the spotlight since his teenage years, but he is already over 30. Yes, he's one of the most famous rappers on the planet, but he also grapples with the same questions that ordinary 30-somethings do. Is he satisfied with life? Is he satisfied with work? Is he too old to have kids? In Chromacopia, Tyler attempts to understand his place in the world, balancing his own desires with the needs of his loved ones. The presence of Bonita, the artist's mother, is felt throughout the album. She offers advice at various moments. For example, she shares wise words like, never tell a woman you love her if you don't, or advises him to always practice safe sex. At other points, she reproaches him for not having children, pleading with him to make her a grandmother before it's too late. She also reminds him how much he looks like his father. In Chromacopia, Tyler sounds more mature than ever, primarily because he acknowledges that being an adult is damn hard. He wants to make his mother happy and repay her for all her sacrifices. He often speaks about their close relationship, while remaining true to his lifestyle. Over the years, Tyler has become increasingly vulnerable in his recordings, but in Chromacopia, he is nearly unrestrained. This album is filled with raw emotions and unstoppable energy. Of course, he still retains some of his boyish charm and trademark charisma, but they are often replaced by moments of confusion and insecurity. The song Noid is dedicated to all those things that make him feel in danger. <laughs> In the track Darling Eye, Tyler imagines standing at the altar before admitting to himself and his loved one that forever is too long for him. Tyler sees how society prioritizes safety and stability above all, and how traditional family commitment is endorsed by public opinion. He is unsure of what he wants himself. At one point, he refers to himself as a bona fide face seat. In the following lines, he dreams of love but admits in these words. I hit the gold mine, I'm thinking new crib, I'm thinking two kids, until I get infatuated. In Chromacopia, Tyler expresses all his feelings openly and without shame. This is refreshing as the artist constantly reminds us of his humanity, and people sometimes experience conflicting emotions. When when Tyler began promoting Chromacopia earlier this month, the visual elements immediately caught attention. He wore a mask, which later appeared on the album cover, and showed promo videos in dark tones with militaristic themes. The promo and the album cover feature metallic shine, gloss, which then transitions to green. This shift from black and white to color became one of the key elements of the album. Even the title, Chroma, symbolizes the intensifying vibrancy of color. <laughs> In the track Saint Chroma, his mother says, You are the light. It's not on you, it's in you. Later in the song, a question arises. Can you feel the light? Can you feel Perhaps this simplifies the unique imagery used in the advertising campaign. But it's hard not to draw parallels between the masks that appeared before the album and the ninth track of the album, Take Your Mask Off. In this song, he begins by describing the various masks that people wear to project the images they want to be associated with. He reads the following lines. Family trips, I be bound one day, hit a switch. You ain't wanna be seen as a bitch, cuz. The situation escalates. A person gets face tattoos and ends up in prison for five to ten years. And here comes the answer in the chorus. I hope you find yourself. Yeah. I hope you take your mask off. As the verses progress, he addresses various conceptual characters, such as a preacher and a housewife. It's not entirely clear, but in the fourth verse, it seems that Tyler is speaking to himself. He reads about being afraid of becoming a father, and that he needs therapy, as if responding to his mother's earlier words that we highlighted. Tyler released three songs before the album's release, the intro, ST Chroma, Noid, and Thought I Was Dead. 
Among them, the last track stands out as the most candid and sharp on the album. In Thought I Was Dead, a collaboration with Schoolboy Q, Tyler once again addresses Ian, continuing his statements about the controversial rapper. However, it's worth noting that he never names him directly. Interestingly, Tyler not only condemns Ian, but also the fans who accused him of hypocrisy, given that he himself started his career with quite bold and provocative antics. White boys mocking this shit, y'all mad at me, y'all can see my dick. Pull up old tweets, pull up old t-shirts. And here's what Tyler said about Ian in an interview. It's white kid, regular, like, Caucasian man. And he's, like, mocking Future and Gucci Mane, like, rap music. And, like, people are like, this shit hard. It's not even, like, satire. It's like, I'm just joking. I'm just mocking it. But I'm like, no, 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 you can't. Do, and I hold rap music so close too. to my heart because this shit changed my life and everyone's life around me. And I'm a nerd about this shit. This is like weird. And I'm why I'm looking at it and something about it like don't even sit well with me in comparison to someone like a Mac Miller or an Eminem who it didn't seem like they was mocking it, they had a genuine love for it, and they were still just being. For sure. Then Tyler finds a way to tie this to the album's overarching theme of growing up and personal development, reading the following lines. Tyler has long been considered one of the most interesting producers in rap, a person who pays close attention to every sound detail in his songs. In Igor and Call Me If You Get Lost, Tyler experimented with bass-heavy synthesizers and powerful, crashing drums, seemingly designed for huge stadiums. The tension between melodic beauty and rhythmic power lay at the core of his production. This trend sometimes manifests in chromacopia, but in this album, Tyler possibly offers the most innovative and rapidly exploratory collection of beats. Noid takes elements from Kanye West's track, Power, transforming the noise-rich composition into a rhythmic rap beat. In Darling Eye, he pays tribute to his idol, Pharrell Williams, with an interpretation of Snoop Dogg's Drop It Like It's Hot, produced by the Neptunes. Tomorrow is a gentle acoustic guitar ballad that, however, does not descend into banality, while Like Him blends sweet melodies reminiscent of Flower Boy with a rhythmic beat, adding a touch of chaos to the song. I hope you find your way home initially floats under the pleasant sound of strings, but then Tyler adds tension, gradually increasing the dynamics. This subtle but distinctive transition demonstrates Tyler's attention to detail in Chromacopia. In these small decisions, Tyler reveals himself as a demanding and precise yet bold and free producer. A few days before the release of Chromacopia, Tyler stated on social media that the album would not feature guest artists. This turned out to be either a joke or a trick, as more than half of the album includes collaborations with artists such as Daniel Caesar, Tizo Touchdown, and Childish Gambino, an artist Tyler once confessed he hated. I used to hate that nigga. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know why. I gotta go to therapy to figure it out, but then this nigga put this song called Earn Out. You are in. It was so undeniable, nigga. I was at conflict with myself. I'm like, fuck it. How could a nigga that I hate so much be so good? And now. The tables have turned and this nigga barely returned my calls. <laughs> Donald, I fuck with you. Thank you for putting out shit that exceeds expectation or the perception that niggas like us should make. I love you. Thank you for existing and thank you for coming out. Please give him another round of applause. However, the most interesting aspect is that the album highlights the contributions of some of the brightest women in rap today. The album continues Tyler's tradition of revealing the potential of artists on the brink of fame. Sticky is a collaborative track featuring Glorilla, Sexy Red, and Lil Wayne, one of Tyler's favorite co-writers. And it sounds powerful and slightly humorous. This song elicited one of the loudest reactions at the project's private listening. Then there's the song Balloon with some of the best verses on the album thanks to Ditchy, who openly expressed her desire to work with Tyler. These tracks are among the craziest on the album, and that's a compliment, as they include unexpected transitions, like when the beat in Sticky turns into Young Buck's Get Buck. Igor is often remembered as Tyler's breakup album, particularly due to memorable tracks like Gone Gone Thank You, I Don't Love You Anymore, and Are We Still Friends. 
In contrast, Chromacopia features almost no theme of heartbreak, although Tyler remains immersed in introspection. One example is the track Hey Jane, where he candidly discusses his anxieties about unwanted pregnancy. In the first verse, for instance, Tyler expresses complex and fearful feelings about fatherhood, concluding with the following words. Look Jane, it's your choice at the end of the day, just know I support either way, no pressure. Moreover, the song demonstrates how personal themes can intersect with political ones. With the upcoming US presidential elections, reproductive rights are at the forefront for many voters. It's interesting to hear Tyler, who usually avoids political topics, join this discussion in such a detailed and vulnerable way. We can also talk about the most notable references in the album. Throughout the project, the female voice of Tyler's mother, Bonita Smith, resonates as interludes on several tracks of Chromacopia, including Saint Chroma, Take Your Mask Off, Tomorrow, Mother, Like Him, and Balloon. Trying to impress a friend, and I'm a single parent, I got bills to pay, I'm not trying to be out of jail. At the album listening event in Los Angeles, Tyler shared that his mother's advice and criticism influenced the overall theme of the release. There were also mentions of other well-known artists besides Ian. Tyler, a native of Inglewood, shares this city with Compton rapper Kendrick Lamar, and they have repeatedly expressed mutual respect for each other's work. Both rappers even appeared together in the music video for The Hillbillies in 2023, alongside Baby Keem. Foreign? Hey, foreign? She's organic, skin is glowing, my heart is going. Like, wow. Split person. The rapper also participated in Kendrick's concert Pop out, Ken and Friends in June, performing his hits like Wushiname and Earthquake. In Chromacopia, Tyler mentions Kendrick Lamar in the last verse of the second track of the album, Ratata. It's really our future, all them other niggas whacked out the biggest out the city after Kenny, that's a fact now. A day before the album's release, Tyler mentioned his love for material possessions, such as his $4 million Ferrari. When addressing listeners at the Chromacopia listening event, he also references the car in the album's final track, titled I Hope You Find Your Way Home. Where where Tyler reads the following lines. Let's also talk about the visuals. The music videos for Noid and Thought I Was Dead feature the artist in a 3D printed mask, created in a slightly altered likeness of Tyler's face. The mask is believed to be inspired by Norton Juster's book The Phantom Tollbooth and its character, the dreadful octopus, a character who could create color with his orchestra. Tyler's hair, cut straight down the middle as if trimmed by a lawnmower, is styled into two column-like shapes on either side of his head, resembling the head of Frankenstein's monster. Here's how the dreadful octopus looked in the 1970 animated film based on the book. We're lucky. It looks like he's ready to conduct today's sunset. Watch. This isn't the first time Tyler has referenced children's stories in his work. In 2018, he recorded the theme song for the Grinch animated film and subsequently released an entire project inspired by the character. 25, 25 days in a month, 25 days in enough why don't give up. Wait a minute. Returning to Frankenstein, it's worth noting that the visual elements of the album and its cover have a sinister monochrome aesthetic, historically associated with the golden age of cinema, or more precisely, with horror films. Additionally, Tyler's character seems to pay homage to a dictatorial appearance. He depicts a person who has complete control over a country or territory. That's all for today. What do you think of the album Chromacopia? Share your thoughts in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye, everyone.